Good morning. And welcome to worship. Um, just a reminder that we will be cutting off our Advent calendar donations next Sunday. So uh, get your stuff here before then. So that that to be transported. Three or four staff Sunday there on the whole list. And I don't think we have a quorum for the council, so you want to meet? <laughs> Did you do that already? <laughs> Any other announcements? If not, let us uh, invite God to our presence in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to turn our call to worship. God calls us in righteousness to open the eyes of the blind and set the sacrament free. With Isaiah, we anticipate God's doing a new thing in Jesus Christ to proclaim healing and liberation to all who suffer. second candle as the fire of courage that we might bear witness to your justice. instead of those in need. We seek the shallow comforts of things we can buy instead of the deep and lasting comfort of your presence. Forgive our stubborn refusal to see and open our eyes to the joy and wonder of your incarnation. Amen. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. The God of boundless grace forgives you all your sins renewing your spirit for the sake of Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Amen. Now we turn to our gathering hymn, Wake Awake, for, and greet the new morn. It's number 242. Please stand. <coughs>
justice to be done. As we wait for your promised Savior, give us hope that all will be made right in you. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this third Sunday of Advent is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus became aware of this, he departed. Many crowds followed him, and he cured all of them. And he ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant who I, whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not wrangle or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Let praise to you, Christ. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Our come, our come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Today we turn to another prophet speaking to Judah in exile. But I think the prophet's words and the promise they bear speaks as loudly to others in exile. Yes, when this servant song was written, the people of both Israel and Judah had been scattered, taken from their homes in the land that God had promised to their ancestors. The hymn writer in plain song, almost chant style, begs for Emmanuel. Israel is in need of rescue, in need of ransom. So why do we sing this hymn today? In most congregations, this Advent hymn will be sung at least once during this season. Why? We aren't in exile. We aren't lonely. We aren't even Israel. So why should we be singing this song? <clears throat> that the answer to that question begins with the denial of the claims we just made. We are in exile. We are lonely. And because of Emmanuel, we are also Israel. Let's look a little more closely at the words of the servant song from Isaiah. To properly understand this song, we really should start with the second paragraph of our reading. Here we have a restatement of the creation story. God created the heavens and stretched them out. God spread the earth and what comes from it and gives breath to the people upon it. God gives spirit to those who walk in it. These claims are the very same claims of the first chapter of Genesis. They are indeed the same things claimed in the first article of our Apostles' Creed. We believe that God is the Creator. And we also give credit to God for creating us. The song next echoes the call to Abraham. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. Did you catch that? Remember that call to Abraham? I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Isaiah is proclaiming that the servant will be given as a covenant to the people and a light to the nations. Well, that sounds like a blessing, doesn't it? Now we can return to the beginning of our song. Here is my servant. Let's skip that little phrase for a few moments. First, let's look at the promises. The servant will not cry or lift up his voice. The servant will not break a bruised reed. The servant will not put out a dimly burning wick. The servant will faithfully bring justice. O come, O dayspring, come and cheer. O son of justice, now draw near. Disperse the, disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow put to flight. Yes, we are Israel. Yes, we are also in exile. We mourn and are lonely. You and I are those bruised reeds. At times, actually, often, we are also those dimly burning wicks. This hymn and the servant song are both meant for us today. It seems that there is rarely a week that goes by 
when I don't read about the death of someone I know. I have far too often spent time in an intensive care unit with a man or woman who is clinging to life. Family members are often close to giving up hope for any meaningful recovery. One way or the other, those families will not have a very Merry Christmas that particular year, or maybe ever after. For many other families, this will be the first Christmas without a dear loved one. We have prayed for quite a few of those families this year. For many other people, this holiday season will be overshadowed by other things. Things like unemployment, financial hardship, separation from family and friends, hunger, homelessness, even depression. None of these things are unique to the holiday season. They also don't go away once the holiday decorations are taken down and stored away. But the holiday season does make most of that stuff more difficult to bear. For each of us, there will be times when mourning, loneliness, and exile are very real, very pressing concerns. The sad truth is that those feelings are never predictable. Those feelings can hit us without any warning and often do so when we least expect the bomb to drop. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. O come, O day spring, come and cheer. O Son of Justice, now draw near. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow put to flight. Into all of those times of our lives, the prophet says, here is my servant. I said we would get back to those four words. Here is my servant. The surprising thing about this text is that the servant is never clearly identified. For Israel, during the Babylonian exile, the word spoke of a new king, a new anointed one, a savior who would restore the nation. For those first hearers, there was more. They would definitely have remembered the promise to Abraham. Ultimately, what Israel or Judah or both would have heard was all about protection. God would protect God's chosen people for a purpose. A chosen na nation would be a light to all the nations. For Christians living after the resurrection, the servant has been understood as Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. We have our Messiah, our anointed one. We also, because of that Messiah, are blessed and protected so that we can be a light to the nations. This world needs ransom, at least as much today as it did when the servant Song of Isaiah was written. The good news is that we have a chosen people, a people chosen by God to bring ransom and to be the light. The chosen people are now in every corner of the world. Israel has truly become the blessing that was promised to Abraham. The servant the prophet sings about is not only a savior. The servant is also Israel herself. The servant is the nation we call Christianity. You and I are part of that great nation. Members of the chosen people. You and I bear the light which can drive the darkness away. And so we finish our hymn. Not only in Advent, but every day of the year, 
Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel, has come to you, O Israel. Amen. Amen. We sing our next hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's number 257. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 6. Church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God's promises are sure, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our petitions will end. We call on our God. Please respond, O come, O come, Emmanuel. God of all nations, you have opened the eyes of the blind and brought out the prisoners from the dungeon. Establish justice in all the earth and teach us your ways. We call on our God. O come, O come, Emmanuel. You are the God who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. May we honor your creation in honor of you. We call on our God. 
O come, O come, Emmanuel. Make our world's leaders both gentle and strong, that they would have both passion and endurance for the work of justice. We call on our God. O come, O come, Emmanuel. You do not break the bruised reed, nor extinguish the dimly burning wick. Send your gentle healing to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Betty, Gerald, Frank, Marty, Greg, Bill, Stan, Terry, Cindy, Barb, Kevin, Alessandra, Axel, Cassie, Harry and Judy, Trish, Gordy, Andy and Mary, Daisy, Harlan, Leanne, Jim, Rick, and their families, and the family and families and friends of Charles Strand and Leo Busker. We call on our God. Shine a light on all people that we might recognize our kinship and accept one another as members of one holy family and inheritors of your grace. We call on our God. We remember the saints who have gone before us giving thanks for their faithfulness to you. May we be faithful as they were until we all are reunited in your love. We call on our God. O come, O come, Emmanuel. In faith, hope, and love, we lift our prayers to you in the name of your promised Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. Please be seated to receive our offer. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. God declares to us a new thing. The salvation that is in our promised Savior, Jesus Christ. Come, share in the feast of that promised salvation at the table of new life. All is prepared for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ, as we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by your holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. Receive the blessing. God, the eternal Word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Turn to our closing hymn, The Church of Christ in Every Age. We sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5.
Christ is near.